to the Jesse Speck YouTube channel. Today, I want to present to you the new series called The Executive Drift Car, which is basically a series on YouTube that I'm making to document the modifications and the tuning process of my Toyota Chaser, JZX100. For all you guys who know drift cars a little bit, this car is really special because I've actually owned it in Japan. I was able to drift it in Japan with my friend Atsushi Taniguchi. Check his YouTube channel right here. I could get the car from him. I could import it and get it road legal in Switzerland. That was a whole adventure in itself. Anyhow, so I want to walk you through today an interesting episode that is going to be really important for the future of this car is basically the whole process of installing a plug-in link ECU, as you can see right here. Make sure to stick around until the end. This one's going to be technical and very interesting. Peace. So today's video is going to be the first episode of Project Executive Drift Car. But on top of that, I want to make a tutorial for all people who are interested in installing a Link plug-in ECU. This may seem to be the stock ECU housing of my Toyota Chaser. However, as you can see, there's a dodgy sticker on the front here. This episode is basically going to walk you through all the steps you need to know in order to install Lynx plug-in ECU, not only in Toyota Chasers, but in any plug-in ECU application, Nissan, Toyota, Mazda, Subaru, whatever your car is. We're not just going through the process of installing the ECU, but also I'm going to show you how to install Lynx additional plug-in loom so you can have extra functions such as additional boost control or uh, wire in your wideband or for example also how to add your boost sensor signal that can come directly through this hose right into your ECU as well as of course all the other important steps in installing that ECU. So make sure to watch it till the end. I'm sure you're gonna learn something. It's gonna be very interesting. All right, Jesse, enough blabbering. Let's get into it. So here you see the new Link ECU plugin version for Toyota Chaser JZX100. This kit is really of excellent quality as you can see in the images right here. You see all the extra ports here on the left. For example, that's where a plug-in loom can be plugged in. At the back here you see the USB cable to enter it with the software. It's pretty incredible if you compare the old motherboard with this one, how compact it is and how little elements are on it compared to the old version. Now, let's look at the stock ECU. So this is what the stock ECU looks like. As you can see, the, there are brackets on the side as well. There's the rear plastic cover that's really looking nasty. I'm gonna have to remove that one a bit later. So let's just start by opening up with the four screws in the corner here to see how it's made inside. So as you can see, this is a stock JZX100 Toyota Chaser ECU for the manual transmission version. Now we're going to remove the brackets off the ECU casing. There are three of them. As you see, I've already loosened them before filming because we all know what happens when you do it simultaneously. It never goes according to plan. Anyhow, so now let's take off the case. As you can see, I actually have to pull pretty hard to remove it because I've actually never opened it. So this is the first time I'm opening this ECU. Let's remove this nasty plastic I was talking about before. Again, four screws in the corners. Removing them. They're also usually quite tight, so make sure not to destroy the, the screws. Since they're Phillips screws, make sure not to destroy them while you're removing the casing. And once that is removed, then we can open the second side of the ECU. And we can see all the electronics inside. In order to speed things up, I've already removed all the screws in the corners, as you can see. 
I also, really important, use one of these anti-static bracelets in order to avoid to have static electricity destroy my motherboards of my Link ECU or my stock ECU. Also here, don't forget to remove both screws on the side there and sort of wiggle the ECU out of its place. This is what it looks like on the inside. Here's what the aluminum frame looks like. Now, the Link ECU is delivered with an anti-static bag, as you can see like this. So I'm just putting the stock one back in there. And now let's install the new one. So a few new plugs you can see for add-ons. So let's just test fit it into the frame to see how it fits. Seems to like fit perfectly. That's like a true plug and play, as we can say. So let's put back the screws in the corners. I'm doing this because I just want to make sure uh, to test fit everything, make sure everything fits perfectly. Uh, and to do so, I'm putting all the screws back in. You will see that I might have to remove them at a later point. So now we're done. Here you see the different plugs. Those are additional plugs for additional functions on the side here. In my left hand I have the USB cable. As you can see I'm in trouble so I need to make a hole in order to have the USB cable to come out. I also have a map sensor and I thought why not just reuse both holes that you see there and drill them out a bit bigger because I have holes in one loom of cables that has to come out of there. So after drilling here you see so this is for the USB plug and on the other side, I reused two of these holes and I drilled them out a little bit bigger. So I'll have one expansion loom coming out and the boost hose coming out through there in order to have an as clean as possible finish. Always put your bracelet on before touching electronics. Let's put this here for the moment. Before actually uh, installing the ECU, I have to pass the cable through. So I'm just going to unplug this here real quick, pull it out and let's put it into the hole. I know from an aesthetical point of view it would have been nice to have a smaller hole but sadly the, hole, the, the plug is of a certain size so I decided to make it a little bit bigger in order to let the cable and the plug go through easily. So now we can install the motherboard into the ECU casing. I'm going to do a magic trick and bang, the screws are in. Awesome, right? Okay, so now let's plug the plug back in. You see it went through here. So let's just insert that one more time until it clicks. There you go. Very good. So, as I said, the hole's a bit big, so I'm going to be uh, adjusting that later. Now, here you see Link's expansion loom for adding additional features. It's made by Link in New Zealand. I'll be plugging it into one of these ports here. This is basically in order to use, uh, for example, external boost controller. So I can add a boost solenoid and cabling it in. What I also want to do is, since I have a wideband AFR sensor, I'm going to wire it in in order to have continuous AFR values coming into my ECU and actually use it for tuning later on. So let's get all these cables out of the way, pass them through the hole that I just made. Yep, pull it all through there. God damn this stupid scotch tape. All right, pull it through and... Oh my God, it doesn't fit. What should I do? <gasps> no! Cut. Use this after to plug it in here. Cut. Okay. What should I do? Cut. Anyway, I, I forced it through a little bit, so I'm gonna pull it out and actually it worked just fine. So lucky me, I don't need to make the hole any bigger. So I'm gonna plug it into this, this port here. And actually, no, I won't plug it in yet because, as you can see here, 
I have the boost sensor that is integrated to the ECU, that black thing. And I'm gonna right away install, as you can see right here, I'm going to install the tube because the awesome thing with Link ECUs, plug-in ECUs, is that you can actually have a direct boost information read by the ECU directly without an external sensor. So just to make sure that the hose holds on really well, even with higher boost, I like to put a zip tie onto the tube just to avoid having problems and uh, popping off inside the ECU case. So I'll put the zip tie on nice and tight. There we go. Yep, that's probably tight enough, Jesse. And wiggle the hose a little bit, cut off the excess of the zip tie and we're good to go. Okay. Now, final step, plug in the plug into the ECU. And then of course, make sure that the cable loom put away inside the casing so we can close the box correctly. There we go. So now you see with a bit of a close up, all the different installs we did. So first the expansion loom, the USB loom, and the boost hose going directly into the ECU. It's really awesome because you can use that boost sensor to create all kinds of safety features in order to avoid to have damage to your engine done because of overboosting. Oh yeah, and by the way here, I've had a little idea on how to adjust this problem regarding the hole is a bit too big. I'll be showing you that in a minute after putting the screws back on. All right, so let's screw that all in. Let's do the other side. Make sure to put the plate on the right side. The screws are flathead screws. Make sure you put the right ones in the right area. Screw it all back together. And now you see what it looks like finally with all the harnesses coming out in the back. Now, now you see all the cables coming out, the boost hose, as well as the USB. As you see, I used some of the boost hose to actually create a little uh, padding around the hole to make, reduce the diameter, but also protect the loom if one day somebody pulls on it. Now, let's put back on all the brackets in order to install it perfectly into the car later. We have both of them here, these one, this one as well. Tighten it well. And finally, the lateral bra bracket. Screw it in by hand and then tighten it with the screwdriver. There we go. This is the final result. Of course, never forget to put the final touch link ECU. If you don't want to get arrested by the cops, don't stick that one on. <laughs> and finally, little detail, as you see, this is not a, a, a USB cable, so it couldn't connect directly to your computer. So you just need to put the adapter harness, which is included always in every link uh, plugin ECU you buy. And then you can enter into your ECU via the USB port. And we're ready for the install. As a closing, let me show you a few funny bloopers from the first recording. This may seem to be the stock ECU housing of my... <laughs> this may seem to be the stock ECU housing... Ooh, that's the angry man. Thank you so much for watching the episode until the end. I really appreciate that. If you like what you saw, do not forget to subscribe. Like this, you can see all our episodes we post. If you have any comments or questions, make sure to shoot us a comment below. Until then, see you next week.